All right, everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Connor Kaminsky. I'm a guitarist from the UK, and today I'm going to be talking about a very highly requested topic, and that is everything to do with my camera gear and my lighting gear and the accessories that I might have with my cameras and how I film my Instagram videos and my YouTube videos. And we'll sort of go over a few tips and tricks that I've got for you and where I think you should start if you're a complete beginner. And I'm gonna give you some recommendations of some of my favorite camera gear that I've been using for years now. So let's get right into the video. So if you're a complete beginner to making videos, say to post on social media, whether that be vertical content or landscape content, it doesn't really matter. I would always recommend the same thing to a complete beginner who hasn't made a video before. So if you're in that boat and you're wanting to get started, I would recommend that you start making videos with your phone um, because I'm pretty sure like nearly everyone's got a phone these days and the cameras on these phones are really good for what they are. The sensors in them are absolutely tiny, but you can actually get really good quality out of them. So like 4K footage and high frame rates. And I think people expect phone footage on Instagram and TikTok and stuff anyway. So sometimes I actually think if your footage looks like it was shot on a phone, it can do better as well in terms of being more engaging and being a little bit more real. So if you're a beginner, I would just start with your phone. And we'll talk about lighting and setup a little bit later in this video. But for now, start with your phone and go from there. So for the rest of you who are maybe just interested in cameras and are maybe looking at buying a camera, or you might just be interested in how I get my videos and photos to look the way that they do, well, let's talk about some of the gear that I'm using. So you'll notice that this video looks a little bit different to the previous videos that I have filmed in the past couple of weeks. And that is because I'm shooting this on my B cam because I will be talking about my A cam, which is the Fuji X-S10. So I've been using the Fuji X-S10 for about three years now. And before that, I was using a Canon 700D. And this was my first real serious camera. The Canon 700D is an amazing camera for where I was at the time and a lot of my early videos were shot using that camera. It taught me a heck of a lot about using the camera and I really got into photography with that camera. So it was a very, very good gateway model that helped me get into the hobby of photography and videography. But when I picked this camera up, it was a very large step up in quality of the camera, like physically and also the features available and what it could shoot like my old canon 700d just couldn't even shoot 4k so getting a camera that could shoot 4k at 30 fps was really really important to me so i bought the xs10 with no lens so i just bought the body and usually this is a good option if you're just wanting to get into maybe a family of cameras say like fuji's and they use the same lenses. So say if I had this lens in my collection already and I just wanted another body, then I could grab this and then I'd be good to go. But I was starting from scratch and I wasn't really interested in the 18 to 55 kit lens that this camera came with when you usually bought it. So I just bought the body and I managed to get it on a steal for about 750 pounds. So you can probably pick a used one of these XS10s at around a similar price these days, I would still recommend this body, even though the XS20 has come out with an updated sensor, a few other handy features like a few extra stops of IBIS and being able to shoot at 60 FPS at 4K, which is probably the only feature that I really miss on this camera, but that's just nitpicking at that point because you'd only shoot 60 FPS if you wanted to do like 4K slow-mos. And I probably would do them if I had that feature, but I don't mind for how cheap I was able to get this body. So let's talk about the lens I'd recommend if you bought just the body of this camera. So the first lens I personally bought for the Fuji and the one I would recommend if you're picking up a Fuji camera body is the XC 35mm f2 lens. And this is a tiny little plastic powerhouse of a lens and there is an XF version that they make, which is basically optically the exact same lens. It's just metal, a little bit more premium in looks, but 
I'm not looking at the lens, I'm making videos. So I was only interested in what this could do optically. And I'd really recommend if you can pick one of these up second hand, they're an absolutely ace lens. 35mm at f2 is a really usable focal length. It's a little bit more zoomed in than the human eye. You do have to put the camera a little bit further away just to get everything in the shot. Say if you were filming yourself playing guitar, then you do have to put the camera a little bit back. But that's not the end of the world because sometimes you want those close-up shots anyway. Really, really pretty lens, lovely bokeh. And I would just say it's worth every single penny that you can pay for this lens. It's obviously a very, very small lens, as you can see on the camera. Uh, it's very lightweight, very handy if you want to take this camera on a photography walk. The only tiny thing I would say is there's no aperture dial on the lens with this, so you'd have to use one of your back dials to change all that sort of stuff. But again, really small quality of life changes and if you're saving like 200 pounds on a lens that looks the same as the more expensive one then for me that made sense so 35mm f2 xc lens by fuji let's talk about the main lens that i've been using for the past year or so and that is this one so it's a fair bit bigger than the xc and that is the 18mm f1.4 it's obviously a lot bigger in size it's a lot heavier it's a lot more expensive this lens was a pretty big investment when i bought it and it is an amazingly versatile lens it's the lens i use to film on my main youtube videos it's the lens i would use to make all of my playthroughs all of my instagram videos i would recommend if you were going to pick up one of these lenses of their new f1.4 range i would perhaps go for the 22 mil or i believe 23 mil uh, instead of the 18 because the 18 is quite wide so you have to get used to using it and sometimes I use the movie crop factor in the camera body to kind of get it a little bit closer to where I want to which is a 1.29 times magnification uh, but this lens is very expensive it's about as expensive as the camera body was it was 780 pounds and again it was a massive investment for me at the time and at the end of the day you could just continue using this lens like this lens is not necessary but I knew that I was moving into a smaller space which is this room and sometimes there's angles that I would like to get which captures more of the room and that's just not possible with a 35 mil so I wanted to get one of the brand new f1.4 lenses because I'm a massive fan of wide apertures so f1.4 is just an absolute dream it's super buttery and this is the main lens it very rarely comes off I don't find myself using the 35 mil too much anymore but if i need more of that cinematic um compressed look then i might pick up that instead of this one but this is just an all-round workhorse it's great for vertical great for landscape everything you need in one lens so i'd recommend either this or the 22 mil if you've got a fuji x body and it still hasn't let me down all right let's talk about the wild card lens that i picked up around a similar time as to this one and it has a very different application so that's like the main workhorse this one is a vintage lens that is absolutely gorgeous and it is a lens from about 1970 maybe very early 70s it's by a company called asahi pentax who used to make film cameras like the spotmatic and they used to make smc takuma lenses if you want a little bit of vibe and a little bit of spice adding to your footage and you're not afraid to shop around on eBay, I would recommend picking up one of these as a little bit of a wildcard lens. Obviously there's no autofocus on this lens. So that's the only thing you have to get used to is using the focus ring, but it's solid, it's metal, it's heavy, it's 50 year old glass. It has a heck of a lot of like mojo to it. As soon as you put this thing on, you can tell, even though it's going through a brand new camera body. So you get a little bit of that like film cinematic look using one of these lenses. I've got the 55 f2, but everyone basically raves about the 50 mil f 1.8. And I'd love to have that lens one day, but this one is a little bit more unknown. It's not as popular as that one. So it was a lot cheaper. I managed to get this lens for about 35 quid on eBay, which is a ridiculous steal. And the only thing you need to know is obviously it's not going to fit the Fuji body. So you have to just grab like an adapter ring. Um, I managed to pick this one up on Earth for about 50 pounds, maybe a little bit more, but it basically just means that the end of this will fit on the front of the body of the Fuji because these old lenses use what's called an M42 mount, which is basically like a screw. So this now fits on there. 
and it's ready to shoot. I use this lens a lot for super zoomed in B-roll where I can control the focus and I might do like rack focus pulls and that sort of stuff. I'd love to use it for a few more videos, but it's just a little bit difficult to go and focus and then walk back and walk back to it and check you're in focus. So sometimes it's easier just to use the more modern lenses for that cleaner look. But I would still recommend looking around for the SMC Takuma lenses on eBay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap cameras over, I'm gonna talk about my B cam and then a few accessories and then we'll dive right into lighting. So let's do it. All right, so we've swapped over to the XS10. Uh, it looks a little bit different because now we're on the 18 mil lens, which is a little bit wider than the B camera. So let's talk about the B camera, which I picked up a little bit later than the XS10. So now we're getting into the territory, which is just more talking about the gear that I do have, but none of this stuff is completely necessary. At the end of the day, I'll just quickly say like, as long as your videos are lit decently, which again, we'll dive into in a little minute, with a phone, like they can look just as good, if not like more human and better than a lot of this stuff. Like it's not about the gear, but I know a lot of you are interested in the stuff that I use. So that's why we're running through it. I just wanted to say, remind you that it's not all about the gear and the lenses and the best lenses and the most expensive cameras. It's just about how you use them. And if you enjoy using them, I love cameras, I love lenses and I like shooting videos. So that's why I quite enjoy picking up a lens or two or saving for an expensive lens, but it's not necessary. The Fujis that I use are expensive, absolutely. There's more expensive cameras. There's a lot more expensive cameras than lenses, but there's also cheaper cameras and lenses as well. So just keep that in mind with everything that I'm saying. But with that said, let's dive into the B cam, which is another Fuji. It's a Fujifilm X100V. And this camera I have such fond feelings for because I just love taking photos with this camera. I picked it up for that reason. The A camera for videos is still the XS10. That's what it was designed for. You can take photos with it, of course you can, and it takes amazing photos. A lot of the photos on my feed on my Instagram have been taken by the camera that I'm filming on now. But I wanted a travel camera that was a bit less bulky and a bit easier to manage with a fixed lens. So the difference between this and the XS10 is obviously there's just a fixed pancake lens right on the front, which is a 23 millimeter F2 lens. I've got the square hood, square hood on the front of it but if you take this off the camera gets a lot more sleek and low profile i just put this on the front of it to completely weather seal it uh, with a uv lens inside the square hood as well a lot of people with x100 v's will pick up this accessory it's not needed it comes with its little ring anyway but the front element of the lens isn't weather sealed so just something to keep in mind but it completely will be if you buy something like the square hood. So as you can see, it's quite low profile, quite small and very travel friendly. So there's no lenses that you have to take. As long as you've got like an SD or two and a couple of batteries and a charger, then this couldn't go anywhere with you really. And that's what I wanted it for. I quite like exploring and getting out and about and I enjoy street photography as well. So I wanted a camera that might be a bit better suited to that and that's why I managed to pick up this camera. Fuji fans will know that the X100V is an immensely popular model and has been out of stock basically ever since COVID started and there was like the shortage of the circuit boards and chips that they used for, well, every camera manufacturer uses them, so there was a shortage all round. But for some reason, this camera stayed out of stock for so long, I remember signing up to multiple mailing lists to let me know when it was in stock again and it was months and months and months and months and months and it just kept on going and going and I was like okay well I mean I'll get one when I get one because I do really want a camera that's designed for photography and it was eventually that I managed to pick one up in a color that matches the XS10 as well the black with like very subtle red highlights and they go together very well and I just think it's an excellent complement to your main camera there have been cases where I filmed two angles at the same time so this is something you would obviously need if you wanted to do that and it films basically the same quality video as the XS10, which was an added bonus for me. Of course, it has all of the Fuji film simulations in there, including Eterna Cinema, which is what I use for all of my videos. And yeah, it's just a little workhorse. I love how tactile it is. Everything's physical. So the aperture ring is physical. The shutter speed is obviously physical. And then you've got a few compensation dial here as well as everything else on this camera. It just feels like a very well thought out design and I absolutely love it for photography for that reason. 
and most of the time I'm shooting Fuji JPEG recipes. There's an excellent blog called Fuji X Weekly, which does JPEG recipes for mainly this camera, but for the XS10 as well, like for any X-Trans 4 sensor that you might have, or even the X-Trans 5 now. So the only change we're going to make to this camera is I'm going to order a diffusion filter to sit inside the square hood instead of the UV filter. So that's the only change we're going to make, and I'm going to talk about the final camera that I have, and then we'll talk about a few accessories. So the final camera in my collection is a very, very old film camera. It is a Canon AE-1 program that was passed down from Zoe's granddad who bought this when it came out. So there's obviously a lot of sentimental value with this camera. It is worlds apart from the Fuji's. So this scratches a very different itch. It's a 35 millimeter camera, so you shoot film. Uh, if you're not sure about film cameras, you basically, in the back of the camera, you load up a roll of film, pull it across, and then when you take a photo, you do the whole thing where you pull the shutter reel round and then it loads up another frame to shoot. I'm not gonna do that now to show you what it sounds like or looks like because I do actually have a roll of film in here. So I don't wanna waste a frame. <laughs> so if you're interested in film cameras, you can pick these up on eBay from anywhere like 20 quid to 150 quid. A lot of people pick up the AE-1 as well as a few others like the Pentax Spotmatic is a great film camera. Uh, so if you're interested in film photography, then this is what I've been using to take all of my film photos. Uh, whenever we go on trips, I take a couple rolls of film or if we visit a city that I've not visited before, I usually take this with a roll of film as well as the X100V, but I've been trying to use this more and more because I really enjoy the flow and the process and how intentional you have to be. On the biggest rolls of film, you only get 36 shots. So you kind of have to sync and make every single one count and you're gonna make mistakes but that's where the beauty is with this sort of stuff anyway that i find you know those out of focus shots that you didn't mean or like the light leaks that come across when the film gets developed there's a lot of technology that's that's been forgotten about as we've moved on into the digital age like film photography and there's a reason why a lot of people shoot films still because it is such a rewarding process and i feel like you become a lot more at one with the art of photography and just enjoying it and enjoying the process and you can't see the photos that you take. You have to wait until you get them developed and honestly, every single time that I do it, it feels like Christmas day, like you get that email from the lab and they said that they've developed your photos and you start looking through them and you're like, oh my God, like I completely forgot that we went here or I forgot I took this photo and wow, that one came out great and oh my God, that one came out awful and you have a laugh and you go through them together. And those memories are really special, so I always try and take this if there's like an event or an occasion, take a roll of film and then get it developed and then you can kind of look back on that with really fond memories. The downside of film photography is that it's extremely expensive, so the cameras themselves are cheap as chips because they're kind of like redundant technology, but the film is incredibly expensive and that is the one massive drawback about shooting film photography, especially in 2024. I think it's only going to get more and more expensive because not a lot of companies make the film anymore. So you'll be shooting expired film. And if you want to buy new film like Portra 160, you're looking at spending anywhere from 30 to 70 pounds for a few rolls. And if you remember what I said before, you get like 36 shots a roll. So it's about two pounds a photo or maybe a hero there, maybe a little bit less, but that's quite expensive when you think about it like that especially when you have digital cameras that can just take a thousand photos and you can just move on. So it's a double-edged sword. I love the fact that you don't get that many shots. You have to think about them. You can't see them. I love that aspect of film photography, but it is an expensive like addition. You're not really aware of, like if you manage to find one of these for 40 quid on eBay and you're like, oh, quid's in. And then you realize you have to buy like a hundred quid's worth of film just to shoot um then yeah the price can rack up quite easily so i don't use this all the time and i definitely don't use this to take pictures of my guitars i very rarely will use this because more often than not i need pictures quite quickly of my guitars so if i'm taking something then i want it right now and i want to post it to instagram or i'll get it on my phone and i want to upload it so that's not really what this is used for, but it is part of my collection, so I wanted to tell you all about it. And for the lens nerds out there, very quickly, it's an FD by Canon, 
50mm f1.4 SSC. Uh, pretty old lens. Um, it's kind of janky. <laughs> I got it on eBay. I was spent a long time looking for a lens uh, for this particular camera. Because at the end of the day, if I picked up a Spotmatic, then I could have used the uh, vintage lens by Pentax on that camera, which would have been really fun. But it's okay, I can't complain. There's a Canon AU one right here, so it's all good. So let's talk really quickly about some accessories that I use. The main one being the diffusion filter. Um, a lot of people have noticed, which is good. Like it looks great. I love how diffusion filters look, but I noticed in a good way. Like people will ask questions like, Hey, like, why does it look so dreamy? Or how does it look so dreamy? Or why does it look so buttery and creamy? And like, why is the light like dispersing funny in the background? And why does it look a bit smooth? That's because of this little piece of glass that goes in front of the lens obviously i'm not using it right now but in all of my previous youtube videos and all of my instagram videos i will be using the diffusion filter i just love how it looks i think it adds a lot of atmosphere to the shots especially how i shoot so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put this in front of the lens you'll sort of see what it does so this is without the diffusion filter and then here you go so that should look a little bit more familiar for my style of footage you can see that when the diffusion filter is in front of the lens you lose a fair amount of saturation and color what you get is this like haze that passes over the entire shot so if i take it away you get a lot more contrast back so your blacks are a lot deeper without it so there's just something to be mindful of but I don't think this is really beatable. As soon as there's like a nice light source in the background of your videos, then this thing looks absolutely immense. And I think it looks really nice when there is a lot of black in the shot. It gives it like this film pushed black like sort of look where it's a bit off black. And I really like that vibe. So these are about 19 pounds on Amazon. You can pick up any diffusion filter you want. This one is a K and F Concepts Nano X. MRC black diffusion and it's the one quarter strength. You don't really need to know the filter thread size, but it's 62 millimeter for my 18 millimeter lens. So that's the diffusion filter. All right, let's talk about lighting. Now, the lights that I use are just from Amazon. They are by a brand I've never heard of called Raleno. And they are these little tiny like monitor looking things and they are great because they're quite cheap. They are small. They have like a diffusion panel in front of them, which is why it looks white. They are LED, so they don't get hot. You can change the temperature of the light. And if you aren't sure what temperature of lights are, it's like how yellow or how white or how blue a light can be. Um, I like to mix and match. I've got three of these. I recently picked up a third one. So I'm using the other two to light this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them off and you'll see how the room looks with no filming lights on. Obviously that lamp in the background is still on and there's a few lamps on on the desk. So you'll get a little bit of lighting from that. But the main filming lights, they're doing quite a lot. So I'll show you what they're doing. I just want to say like, I am not like a professional cinematographer. I don't really know what I'm doing. A lot of you are really interested. So this is just my experience and how I approach lighting. It's probably many mistakes that I make, but it's all just part of the journey. I'm still learning on how to light videos better. So just bear with me. But with that said, let's just jump right into the lighting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the right light off and then I'm going to turn the left light off and you'll be able to see the difference. So let's turn this one off first. So that's that one. And then let's turn this one off. And then let's sit back down. So now you can see how dark this shot is. This little bit of natural light is from the blinds that are in the studio and the camera's probably struggling with autofocus and everything because it's so low light. There's a little bit more bleed from the rest of the room, but you can see like half of my face is in shadow. So let's turn this light back on because we need to add a little bit of light. And this light is just placed like at a right angle of my face. So let's turn that on. And now you can see that obviously I'm a lot better lit. You can see my face now. And this is a white light. So I've set this to the whitest that these little panel lights can be. And I quite like playing with different temperatures of lights on one shot. 
So the other side of my face has now gone darker, even though that was the lightest part of my face before. Imagine a triangle. So this, this one's over here. This one is the exact same thing, but on the left side of my face instead. So let's turn this one on. And now all of a sudden you've got a much more finished shot. So you can see on this side of my face is like a white light. On this side of my face is like a yellow light. So I love blending the two different temperatures together. You get like a much more interesting shot. If I turn this light to completely white, then it looks a little bit too clinical. So let's do that and you can kind of compare both shots and see which one you prefer. So this is with both lights on completely white. So I think this is a bit more natural lighting, but my face is a little bit more washed out. So I usually prefer having one on yellow, one on like a white. So. This one's on 5600 and that one's on 3200 for people who want to know the numbers out there. So let's put it back to normal and we'll move on. So obviously a lot of you out there are interested in making Instagram or TikTok videos or vertical videos that can be used for anything. So I actually do a little bit of a different lighting method for those kind of videos. So let's talk about that. But the first thing that I need to do is of course, flip the camera. So let's do that. Okay, so this shot needs a little bit of work. So obviously we've flipped the camera vertical, which I know is gonna look very strange on YouTube, but this is the sort of stuff you have to do. Um, so I've got a tripod that you can just flip either way, landscape or vertical. So the camera is exactly the same on the same tripod. I've literally just flipped it so it has gone vertical. So let's talk about how I would do a little bit of lighting and general setup for something like a very quick Instagram video where I'm sat on this chair playing a guitar. So let's run through that. So I thought I would do a little bit of a handheld run through of what's happening here. So we've got the XS10 over there in vertical and then we've got my two panel lights quite close together now. So we've got one high up and that's going to be the white light that's quite soft and it's angled down. And then we've got one that's a lot lower that's going to be the 3200 temperature light and that all shines on this guitar here obviously where I'll be sat as well so if we turn this light on all of a sudden everything gets a lot brighter and I'll show you why I do that in a second on the vertical camera and I'll take you through like what the different lighting looks like and I'll give you some tips and tricks for getting the best lighting with your guitar as well all right so as I was saying before this shot needs a little bit of work I've just turned that yellow light back off so you can see the difference that it makes when I do turn it on so let's do that now so we've got the diffusion filter back on the lens as well. I just wanted to mention that. Let's just have a quick look. Obviously this looks quite nice and I'm lit from this side, got a little bit of contrast here. And I quite like that in my videos and I'm happy with the background with the guitars on the wall. Let's just play around with some guitar angles. So obviously you can rotate the guitar back and forth. And what I usually look for is something like the string reflections there. You can see them going back and forth, like around here. And I love seeing that sort of stuff. Um, it makes the strings easier to see. It's a bit easier to do if you've got very clean strings, uh, but these are quite old. Uh, so it's like extra difficulty mode. Um, so I always like looking out for that uh, whenever I'm making videos. So you can see here, it's gonna go dark and dark and we don't want that. So we wanna rotate it back and kind of have something like that. You could even have like maybe like that. So that's a pretty comfortable position for me. So the other thing that you can do is you can rotate the guitar like that and like that as well, which doesn't look great. You can see as soon as we get there, the pickups are basically mirrors, the fretboard's basically glazed over. So just keep in mind, like if you're playing guitar like this, you like to play guitar with it quite far down on your leg and back towards you like that. Keep in mind that it might end up looking something like that on video. So I always try and scooch the guitar a bit closer to me. So the strings are the things that are catching most of the light and it pops out a little bit more. So just experiment with like how your guitar looks. This is a natural finished guitar with satin. So glossed finished guitars are gonna reflect exactly like mirrors. So they're more difficult to shoot with. Uh, so you can get away with a little bit more with a satin finished guitar. That's enough for me in vertical mode. Let's go back to landscape and finish the video. All right, so I hope that was helpful to those of you out there that are interested in camera, gear, 
and accessories and how I sort of achieve the looks that I do achieve. Let me know if you'd like me to cover how I sort of go about photography as well because that's a little bit of a different ball game when it comes to taking pictures of guitars um, for me personally. So let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Please leave a comment. Let me know if this has been helpful to you. I love reading your comments always. And if you are subscribed, please subscribe. That would be amazing. And with all that being said, I'll see you guys next week. See you in a bit.